Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys and this message was forwarded to me by one of our admins. The message reads like this, Hello my brother, can you please post for me is anonymous. So my story goes on like this, my brother, there was a time when I thought that I do not or anyone any explanation at all i grew up in a family whereby we were okay we did not lack anything in life life was just perfect you know if you grow up in a family whereby there is a lot of money you do not even have to worry about what tomorrow is going to bring for you you do not worry even about the fate of your soul it was only after everything had been taken away from me that was when i started thinking about the fate of my soul but my brother when i started thinking about the fate of my soul it was a little bit too late because i had already dedicated my life and i had dedicated my soul to an altar so for me to be where i am right now let me start with my father my father he was a man he was a businessman and you know like with our countries us here in africa for your business to succeed you need to be politically connected such was the situation that was in our country only those that had political connections they were the ones that could have businesses that could stand out then the rest of other business people they didn't even stand a chance at all so my father he got a contract his first contract and the requirements for that contract was that he was supposed to have some working capital but since he was politically connected he was given the money that he used so that it can reflect on his bank statements and everything my brother after that my father started getting a lot of contracts and giving a lot of people kickbacks because he had already been given a contract on a silver plate from there on my father went on to be one of the richest people at the time in our country but just like in any country whereby the political climate is all about corruption so what happens is that after your friends will start dying your political friends then the moment that they die a lot of people would come after your business and everything that you would have generated out of your business this is what happened to my father after the generation of politicians that he was connected to started to die one by one that was when he started to lose out on the government contracts and as if it was not enough he then started losing those government contracts and some of his businesses so when the time when my father was enjoying all of the free gifts that were being handed down to him by his politically connected friends and other politicians my father had acquired so much land i still remember that when i was still growing up sometimes we would go out for holidays and we would travel for miles and miles whilst our father will be showing us land where he owned so the land that my father used to own i think that even if we wanted to start our own small city or a province at that time we could do that because he owned so much land after my father's friends started to die he then started to lose those properties especially those commercial farms those were the ones that they targeted first so what the new generation will do is that they will just come up with a story in the newspaper then after that my father will be taken to the court then he would lose the case in the beginning of his struggles before he had passed away he used to go to fight the battles in court but he then saw that this was nothing because it was a losing battle for him they were after the land that he was owning and they were after all of those businesses that he had acquired through the years and at that time my father had made another mistake because 
at the time when he was ultra rich, he had a lot of women and each and every woman that he had dated, he made sure that the woman will fall pregnant for him. My father, he has a lot of kids. The last time that we spoke about it as a family, we counted 32 kids that we know, including me. Soon after my father losing his properties, then stress affected him since he had a very big family that he could no longer take care of. He then passed away. My father unfortunately passed away without leaving anything. He was just found dead while he was parked by the side of the road. Just like these political contracts that are given to you, like when you are heavily involved into corruption, your army generals, they are the ones that hand you these contracts and most of them, they are not done according to the book. So after the passing away of my father, people just came. They started grabbing whatever they could grab, whether it was movable assets or the farm, anything that they could take from my father, they could they just took it because most of the items they were not even documented. We were left with nothing. And after the people had grabbed everything, that was when his closest relatives started fighting over whatever that was left behind by the people that had grabbed most of my father's assets and properties. Within a short period of time after my father had passed away, then poverty started to affect me. I can say that this was like the first time for me to experience what poverty taste like because I was not used to it and at that time I was married but the woman that I had been married to it was just a marriage out of convenience your father was a businessman my father was a businessman we met and we got married to each other then we had our only child so after she saw that everything that was happening in my life I was going to end up becoming a poor man and when her father refused to bail me out that was when she ran away from me then right now she is staying overseas and she left me alone she took my kids right now it has been many many years I have been unable to have a relationship with my kid. So my brother, after I had tasted poverty, I then decided that maybe it was better for me to visit your local priest. So I then visited this other local priest who then told me that he could give me some charms. At first, the charms that I wanted was to make sure that my wife, my ex-wife, would return back from Europe. And when she would have returned back, then we could have an arrangement so that we can co-parent our kid that we had together. But that priest then told me that if I could dedicate my life on his altar without sacrificing anyone, I could then live a life full of abundance. So I agreed. I then chose to lay my life and I gave my life to that altar. I was made to lie down in a room for the whole day. It was a very painful thing for me because I am someone who is living with a chronic disease. When I went to that place, they immediately locked me up in another room and they chose to deny me anything to eat. So throughout the night, I could not eat anything. Then the following day, they only gave me water. And I think that they had just placed a few teaspoons of sugar in the water so that I could not starve because they knew about my chronic disease. Throughout the day, Brother Nashi, I did not eat anything. When it was, when the evening arrived, that was when I was taken out of that room. Mind you, when they were doing this, they had tied my hands and my legs with a rope so they had to drag me into that other room where I was supposed to dedicate my soul in that altar. They took me and they placed me on top of that altar as if I was an animal that was about to be sacrificed but no blood was spilled. Then 
I was told all the words that I was supposed to recite throughout the night. Whenever I had the strength, that was when I would recite those words that had been said by that priest. When I was lying on top of that altar, that was when I dedicated my life to whatever demonic entity that I do not even know. I don't know if it was because of starvation or if it was something that was spiritual because there was a moment after I had said those vows, I felt like my spirit was leaving my body and there was another spirit that entered into my body. As that spirit was entering into my body, I felt like there was someone who was stabbing me with a thousand needles because it was very painful, but I could not move. I could not even touch myself because of the way that they had tied my hands and my legs together. My brother, throughout the night, I felt your hunger pains, but I chose to soldier on because I was not supposed to call out for help. Well, least I was dedicating my soul to that altar. When it was just past midnight, that was when the priest came into that room and he told me that it had been done. They took me into another room where they offered me food in liquid form, but I was too weak to eat anything. They forced me to drink up some herbal mix and after I had drank that herbal mix, that was when I was able to drink the food that was in liquid form. The next day, I was as strong as a horse. Then I returned back to our family house. From there on, my brother, money then started appearing, magic money out of nowhere. I then returned back to that priest and he told me all that I was supposed to do with the money that regularly appears in my car or in my bedroom. He said that I should never make the mistake to try to invest the money because the moment that I would try to invest the money then the money it will stop coming back to me. He said that the more that you spend the more that you earn but I'm not supposed to spend this money on anything that is meaningful. All that I do is that when I go out I go to the most luxurious places where I can spend a lot of money. I am that kind of a guy who can just get into a club and put the tab on me and drink alcohol with people that I do not even know. This is the way that I am supposed to spend this money. So when I felt my soul leaving my body, the only part that the priest had skipped was the part whereby I would lose my mind. So when this happened for the first time, I didn't even understand what had happened to me. I only woke up and when I woke up, I was surrounded by my family members and they had tied me to a tree. I asked them what was going on. Then my little brother said that when I was driving, pulling my car out of the yard, that was when they heard me screaming. I screamed and I exited the car and I started removing my clothes. Quickly they jumped on me, then they tied me to the tree. In short, Brother Nashi, I had lost my mind. So after this, I then returned back to that priest. I asked him what the hell was going on with my life. At first, he was not open with me. Then it happened again. This time around, when it happened, I woke up. I was in an area that I didn't even know. I was busy picking up from a rabbit. I was busy picking up rotten food from a rubbish bin. That was when I knew that, no, that priest, he was hiding something from me. I then returned back to that priest who told me that this was for my own good. That was why he didn't want to tell me anything. He then said that at the time, when I was lying on that altar, sacrificing my soul to the shrine, what had happened is that the oath that I had said, it meant that the altar will do anything that it wanted to do with me. And right now, his shrine had chosen that I was supposed to lose my mind regularly. And I was supposed to eat whatever meal that was going to be dished out for me by the altar because I had already dedicated my life to the shrine. Like right now that I am confessing to you, Brother Nashi, this thing, it happens to me without any warning. So I am living a life that is full of fear. 
each and every day i am terrified thinking that when is it going to happen when am i going to lose my mind so this priest he then gave me a charm this charm that he gave me it just looks like a normal necklace he said that this necklace it is a way of controlling that spirit of madness that comes and possesses my body so that if i am in a place whereby i will be in danger then i will be able to go into a secure environment so that is what i do right now whenever i feel that the spirit of madness is coming to possess my body i drive back home and i lock myself up until i am okay again but sometimes this spiritual attacks it comes without any warning at all the next thing that will happen is that i would wake up in a place whereby i do not even know and when i would look at the way that i would be sometimes i would have spent a week just walking around like a madman